next set of notes we're going to do is going to kind of connect acceleration, hang time, and free fall all together. Um, I swear I'm going to throw in some extra equations that are going to be super helpful. Um, so the difference between all of these, so we're going to start with acceleration. The formalized definition is the change in velocity over time. And the three ways you can change it is one, increase speed, two, decrease speed, or three change directions. Okay, um, acceleration um, could be horizontal in either direction. Acceleration, acceleration. Or it could be vertical. When it is vertical, we call it free fall. And please notice I put arrows on the top and bottom intentionally. Free fall is any time we're dealing with gravity. So um, gravity can replace acceleration in an equation when an object is moving vertically on Earth. So just like there's a positive and a negative direction when it comes to horizontal, so notice change direction. This is why I, I went over that graphing stuff so much. Um, remember, positive change of direction on a graph would be marked up here. So if this is the zero point, um, when you did the positive, you moved away from the sensor. When you did the negative, you moved towards the sensor, right? Away, aka increase distance. And then this one would be towards and you decrease distance. I'm running out of room here. Distance. Okay. And see. So something, sorry, that's so sloppy. Increase distance and decrease distance. Um, that could also be if you moved. We're, I'm talking in the case of those sensors. If you were moving away, like behind the sensor, that would also be a negative. Okay, same thing for gravity. This side would be positive. We always consider going down towards the Earth as positive gravitational pull, and this is negative gravitational pull. Okay, um, and then the third concept, so remember free fall is um, the only force acting is gravity. The caveat, remember, would be uh, ignoring air resistance. Right? Okay. Ignoring air resistance. Important for you to realize. Okay, the third thing we're going to acknowledge is hang time. Hang time is the, the amount of time you travel to get to the peak of your jump. So this is the person. To the peak of your jump, back down to start. The peak of your jump at this one millisecond or whatever, you are moving at zero meters per second. That's your velocity, not your acceleration. Your acceleration is always 
downwards at 9, 8 meters per second squared. That is always your acceleration. So it's going to be working backwards up on you on the way up, and it'll work forwards for you on the way down. All right? Hang time. Time in the air up and down. Okay, so this is going to be a little bit different from free fall because free fall is always like when we're thinking free fall, it's one directional, it's one direction in the thing. Where hang time, you're going up and down, so you have to recognize there's a difference. Okay, equation time. This is where things get fun. I'm going to increase, I'm going to review some variables with you. First, distance. D equals distance. Okay, I'm going to like this. Variables. Because some people got hung up on this. D is for distance. T, time. X is usually position. H is usually height. G is gravity. I'm trying to think. Oh, V is velocity. And there's two branches of velocity, VI, VF. This is initial velocity, and this is final. This corresponds with an acceleration. We wouldn't need, which would be represented by A. Okay, acceleration is A. You need a final and initial velocity because when you're in free fall, you're, when, you, when I first knock you off of the top of Chaminade Hall, your initial velocity was zero, and then you had to move to a final velocity. You would, so there are going to be times where you have to determine what your final velocity is in a fall. Okay, so here's where we get to some equations. And while you don't have to memorize these equations, you do have to understand when it's important to use them. So the first equation we're going to go with is, and this could work if you're moving horizontally too. So I'm going to use A. Um, remember A can be replaced. With G when we're moving vertically. Okay? A is usually horizontal, G is vertical. Okay, so the first one, if I am accelerating, so I already taught you V equals AT. So if you know your acceleration and you accelerate at that rate, if you're pressing on the acceleration pedal, when you're learning how to drive and you press on that accelerator for 10 seconds, you can figure out your velocity. Okay, well, what if you're in the middle of the acceleration and you start the time? So some things that you need to be aware of, um, ways to figure out your final velocity. So velocity. Um, if you know time, you can say v final is equal to v initial plus a t. So this is a branch of the original equation. So if you're assuming you're starting from zero, then it breaks back down into this. This is if you start at zero. Start v i zero. Okay, that's your starting at rest and accelerating. If you're not starting at zero, you have to use this. Okay, 
another velocity equation. Purple. Velocity all in purple. Another one. This is if you have time. You time is known. Okay. So the next one we learned is what if we're trying to find um, if distance is known. So V final equals V initial, and this time it's squared, plus 2 times A times distance. Okay? Um, so if you know distance, you would have Is that listed? Okay, distance. Okay. So 2 times acceleration times distance, and this is if distance is known. It's known. Okay. What about your distances? How do you solve for distance? Okay, so if you recall, I gave you the original equation, g equals one half g, well, um, you can also do a t squared, or distance, which is the same as, this is horizontal, vertical would be distance equals one half g t squared. Okay. I'm going to run out of time here, so I'm going to write these kind of quickly. So if you know time, you know time, it, and you have to figure out, um, and if your velo initial velocity is not zero, so VI is not zero. Okay, I think it still kept my recording. Um, ignore, I don't know if it cut me off or not. So, to solve, if your initial velocity is not zero, you put your initial velocity times time plus one half a t squared. Okay? Again, you could repeat this over here with the letter g. Um, I'm not going to do that. You Hopefully, that makes sense to you. Okay. Um, so that's if you are solving for distance and you have your acceleration, okay? So what's important to note here is you have acceleration. You may not always be given acceleration. So the second way, and this is what you have to pay attention to. So I recommend that you write down your variables when you practice this. Um, so in this case, distance, next one. And this one is if you have, um, this is no acceleration. Don't have acceleration. Okay. So in this case, you would do distance equals V initial plus V final over 2 times time. Okay, here's what I was missing here. Don't have acceleration, but have V final. Okay, so each one, one of these components is missing. So you have to kind of pay attention to that. Um, and you have to look for what variables are in the word problem in order to successfully do each one of them. And then, once you have these equations, you can just plug and chug based on what you are looking for. Hope this helps.